Hi, yes, Warmers. We hope you're staying healthy and giving yourself a pat on the back for everything you're doing to live a more sustainable life. Every step in the right direction is awesome. You are doing great, we just know it. If you're keen to learn more about sustainable living, go ahead and subscribe right down here. And then after this video, of course, check out our back catalog of videos too. So it might not be the first thing you think when you hear that when you open a can of soda, but you've just released some carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. I know, right? But before you swear off everything fizzy, let's take a closer look because it's not as bad as you're now thinking. The carbonated beverage market is huge and still growing. Without including alcoholic beverages, it's expected to hit market value of 320 billion US dollars in 2028. There has also been notable push for healthier options like low calorie, low carb, gluten free, clean label and using natural sweeteners like stevia. In the UK in 2021, low and no calorie carbonated beverages outsold regular versions by more than double. But how do those little bubbles get into your favourite soda? Carbon dioxide gas is forced into a beverage under very high pressure where it undergoes a chemical reaction when it hits the water. Yeah, 90% of any soda pop is water. Producing aqueous carbonic acid. This essentially traps the dissolved carbon dioxide and the pressure inside the container keeps the molecules trapped. A carbonated beverage in an unopened container contains almost no bubbles. When you open the container, however, you're releasing the pressure, allowing the CO2 to break free from the solution and make its way to the surface, giving you that fizz sound. Carbon dioxide has a few important properties, making it the perfect choice for giving soda that fizz. Firstly, it's soluble, the most soluble of all the non-toxic gases. Approximately 1.5 litres of carbon dioxide can be dissolved in one litre of water when at normal atmospheric temperatures. The next characteristics are stability and safety. Carbon dioxide will always form carbonic acid with no nasty byproducts, and it's non-toxic. Methane could be used to create the bubbles, but being highly flammable, it's not a good choice. Carbon dioxide is cheap, meaning carbonated beverages can be offered at reasonable price points. And lastly, carbon dioxide preserves the beverage for a very long time, shelf life being another factor in maintaining achievable prices for consumers. Now for the all important question, does this mean that anyone concerned for the longevity and health of this beautiful planet can't enjoy the loveliness of bubbles playfully dancing across your tongue? Thankfully, no. Bear in mind, we're not discussing the environmental impacts of the packaging. Hint, go for cans, not plastic bottles. But from a purely beverage standpoint, these drinks are okay. How so? Well, each can of pop contains a very low two to three grams of carbon dioxide. Compared to the carbon emissions of the average American being at 14.24 tonnes per person per year, a few cans of soda doesn't seem like anything to worry about. To look at it another way, some calculations in the Chicago Tribune assert that the average US consumption of carbonated drinks is 16.4 billion gallons and the US national annual carbon emissions is 24.7 billion metric tonnes. So the carbonated drinks contribution to emissions is 0.001%. But more importantly, the source of the carbon being injected into the beverages is most often from fossil fuel power plants. The gas is captured from the exhaust of the power plant, purified and sold to beverage companies and bottlers. The gas which would have been released into the atmosphere at the plant is diverted and given a second use, before then being released into the atmosphere. Another method of commercial CO2 production for use in food and beverage industry specifically is via ammonia production. This inorganic compound is largely used as plant fertilizer and is made through burning natural gas to separate the carbon and hydrogen atoms. The hydrogen is then combined with nitrogen to get ammonia, leaving the carbon atoms available to combine with the oxygen atoms, creating carbon dioxide. This method of obtaining the CO2 has the least impurities, so is a cost-effective route. Just briefly, going back to the packaging side of things, one great workaround is an at-home carbonation station, like a soda stream. You get the fun of the fizz without the single-use containers. This video is in no way sponsored by SodaStream, but if they are watching, get in touch. There are lots of health reasons to choose plain water instead of flavoured carbonated drinks, 
but you don't have to feel climate guilt for picking up the occasional soda. And on that note, I'm off to the fridge for some water. Thank you for joining us again, Swarmers, and thanks for being a part of this journey to a more sustainable future. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay sustainable. Mm -hmm.